In this video, I want to talk to you about extreme value theorem. And it's called the extreme value theorem because it deals with extreme values. So we can be talking about maximums and minimums again. So one question you might ask is where do these um, maximums and minimums occur? And so let's just look at this graph that I have here of f of x. It's a continuous function on the closed interval a, b. And notice that I've labeled some points of interest. So we've got the point capital A, the point B, the point capital C, capital D, E, and F. And so you'll notice that A and F are the endpoints, and the points B, C, D, and E are actual critical points, right? These are the places where the function would have local extrema. So again, just to reiterate, points B, C, D, and E are the critical values or critical points if we take the X and the Y. And points A and F are the endpoints of the function. So the extreme value theorem actually says, and as I told you, we always want to break our um, theorems up into their conditions and conclusions. So there's one condition for the extreme value theorem, that is F of X is a continuous function on the closed interval a, b. So that is the condition for the extreme value theorem. If that condition is satisfied, the conclusion of the theorem says that f of x attains both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum on the closed interval a, b. So this is a bit different than our study of local extrema because the theorem says that if we have a closed interval, there must be some place on that function in that interval a, b where it is the absolute minimum. That means that it is the absolute smallest value for all values on that interval and also an absolute maximum. So in a problem, the way we would have to do this is that first of all, we'd have to find our critical values, C1, C2, C3, and C4. And just remember that those occur when the derivative is equal to zero or the derivative is undefined. And that also has to be true that these critical values, whatever they are, I'm calling C sub i, have to be in the domain of the function, right? So we need to check that. But provided that that's the case, then what we're going to do is we're going to check the functional value at the endpoints, all of the critical values, and then that right-hand endpoint. And then the largest value is the maximum. The smallest value is a minimum. So from our picture, you can see that we have a minimum this time at the left-hand endpoint, and this is an absolute min. And then we have a maximum at the right-hand endpoint. So this is the absolute max. In our subsequent videos, you will actually see some more examples, and we'll deal with the case where we're trying to find absolute extrema on an open interval.